topic this evening is to talk about the role of prayer in evangelism. And before we start, I, will want, to, I want us to pray. Heavenly Father, King of Glory, we thank you, we bless you, Lord, for the opportunity you have given us as your children to go out there and, and teach to all nations. We thank you, Lord, because we have not chosen ourselves, but you have chosen us to be your disciples and to reach out to the lost, to the vulnerable, to the sinners, so that they can turn to you. Father, we bless you, Lord, Father Almighty, for the opportunity you have given us. We pray, O oh Lord, that the Holy Spirit will continue to enable us and empower us to reach out to the lost in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. This evening, I'm going to talk briefly on the role of prayer in evangelism. We know that prayer is communicating with God the Father through the Word with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. We cannot of ourselves do anything except by prayer, except by committing our ways, our activities unto the Lord. So the, the, the work of evangelism, we cannot do it on our own strength. So we have to seek the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to seek the power of God to be able to do the work effectively. And Jesus told us in his words in John 15, 5, that we have to abide in him as he abides in us. For without him, we can do nothing. So without Christ, there's nothing we can do. We cannot of our own go out there and reach out to the world. Because we know the world of nowadays, not to talk of the olden times when even our, our Lord and Savior experienced a lot of challenges in going about doing his ministerial works. So, for us to effectively reach out to the souls of men, we have to commit evangel our evangelical work to the hand of God, working through the Holy Spirit. What is evangelism? Probably we need to ask ourselves that question. Evangelism is sharing the gospel, the gospel of truth, the gospel of, of light, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, with, a, with the aim of leading an individual or group of people to Christ. We have been, as, for, as uh, believers, we have been commissioned by our Lord Jesus Christ to go out there and preach the word, preach the gospel, and to lead people unto Christ. In Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 20, it was, we were given a command, a commission, to go out there. It is a command, a command to go out there and preach the word, preach the gospel, baptizing them, baptizing the people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus also even went on to tell us in verse 20 that he will be with us even to the end of the, of the earth. We will see from this, from the commission, from the mandate given to us to go and do the work of evangelism. Jesus Christ said he's going to be with us. We are not going to be alone in doing the work. So, Having, having said this, we must know that of ourselves, we are not the ones sending, sending ourselves forth. So of ourselves, we cannot really do the work. And that is why the, the prayer is very, very important. We cannot underestimate the role and function of prayer in evangelism. And whenever we are preparing to go for evangelism, to reach out to the people, we need to ask God to show us where he wants us to go and, and how he wants us to do it, whom he wants us to speak to. 
how he wants us to, is to lead people, even from our own family. How to lead people from our own office, our own community. Because a lot of us, or a lot of us think that we can just go out there and start speaking to people. We can't do that in our own strength. Amen? So, that is why it is very, very important for us to seek the face of the Lord first before we go out. In our preparation, we must pray. We need to pray. We need to fast. We need to seek the face of God. We need to seek the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to face the challenges that we are going to face out there. Because I tell you, there are lots of challenges out there. Even Jesus Christ met with challenges when he was going about doing the work. I remember a story in Luke chapter 9, verse 51 to 56, when Jesus Christ was passing through Samaria with his disciples. And he faced rejection. Because one of the challenges we are going to face when we go out there evangelizing is rejection. The people will reject the truth. They do not want to hear the truth. They even question us. Question the truth. But we know we are standing upon the truth of the word of God. So Jesus Christ, in this example that I am about to say, when he got to this Samaritan village, the people rejected him. They did not even want him to pass through their village. You know what the, one of the disciples said? He said, it was James and John. I said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah, Elijah did? But what did Jesus Christ say? Jesus Christ said, no, no, no. You, it seems as, as if you do not know what manner of spirit you have. You do not know that you have the spirit of God in you. And I want to tell you, as Jesus Christ re responded to their action to call down fire from above, because the Samaritans rejected Jesus. He said, Jesus Christ now told them that, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy man's life, but to save them. So we are asked to go out there, even while, because our, uh, what I'm about to tell you is that one of the challenges we are going to face, like I said, is rejection. Rejection of the word of God, as Jesus Christ too had been rejected. But we have to have it at the back of our mind that our going out there is to save, is to bring the lost, is to bring the sinners to the kingdom of God. Amen. And God leading us, we will succeed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And another thing we want, I want us to know, in one of the challenges we are going to face, which prayer our preparing, pre preparing to go out there with prayer will help us to surmount is that the people, like I said, do not want to hear the truth. And you have a lot of people out there that have knowledge. They will question you. They will raise issues with you. In fact, if you are not careful, they will abuse you. They will be aggressive. Do you want to uh, um, give you a fight? But if you have prepared by prayer, all the people with, who might have by, by post an aggressive nature when you are talking to them outside, you will see that with your prayer, the Holy Spirit will have gone ahead of you to prepare the mind, their mind. Because one of the prayers you have to pray, to pray before you go out is that, Lord, prepare the heart of the people. Let their heart be receptive to your word. In the name of Jesus. You pray that in the name of Jesus. And you commit their soul, their spirit, unto the, hand, unto the hand of the Lord. There are lots of people out there. They are so hard-hearted. They do not want to hear it. Some people don't even want to hear the name Jesus. I remember one of the, my, 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 my outings, evangelizing. When I handed a, a tract to a gentle lady, the next thing she did, looked at me from head to toe, and then dropped he took, she took the, the evangelical trust for me. As soon as he looked at me, sized me up, he threw the trust into the, into the bin right in front of me. Praise the Lord. So if you have not prepared your mind, what will happen? We have a 
spirit of offense. You might be offended, but you are not supposed to be offended when you are going out to preach and to lead people to Christ. The Lord will help us. And I want also to I also want us to know that it is the prayer that can overcome all these challenges. Jesus Christ Himself has told us in John 16:33 that we are not going. Uh, uh, he's not telling us that we will not have persecution, that we will not be persecuted when we go out, that he will, will be persecuted. But we, but the. The assurance that he gave us was that we should not be discouraged because he had already overcome the world for us. So already we are overcomers. Before we go out there, Jesus has given us that encouragement and the confidence that when we go out there, we are going to overcome any challenges, any, any negativity, any power of darkness that we are going to overcome them. So at the back of our mind, before we go out, we must prepare in prayer. We must saturate the environment with the word of with the power of the Holy Spirit. We must ask the Lord to go out there and disperse his angel so that all the people that we are going to meet will be have favor. We have favor with them. They will listen to us. They will not oppose us. Because there is nothing prayer cannot do. It is the prayer that can soften the heart. You remember the Lord said that the heart of these people are so hard, but I will remove the heart of stone and put the heart of flesh in their mind. So you prepare yourself by asking God to prepare the mind, the, the hard-hearted uh, heart, the stony heart, and put the heart of flesh in it so that their mind will be receptive to your word. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And another thing I wanted to tell us about the role of prayer is that as we prepare, we should pray for empowerment. Empowerment. Empowerment against the spirit of fear. Because a lot of times, most of us, most of, of members of our believers, they don't go out there evangelizing because of fear. Fear of retribution, fear of attack, fear of rejection, Fear, whatever fear. So, when we are preparing to go out, one of the prayer points we have to ask God, or the power of the Holy Spirit that we have to ask for, is that the Lord should give us the spirit of boldness, the spirit of confidence, the spirit to speak the word with, with boldness, to speak the truth with boldness, because a lot of people want to challenge the truth. But we, we, we will start by the grace of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the fact that we have already equipped ourselves and empowered ourselves with the power of prayer. We will go out there and speak the truth and tell this truth with confidence. Amen? For the Lord said he has not given us the spirit of fear but of power, love, and sound mind. So we should go out there with the belief that the people will be receptive to our words, to the words of God in our mouth. And the Bible tells us in any way that Jesus Christ, where we abide in Jesus Christ, how we are armed with the truth, how we know the truth ourselves, he said, we go out there, we will bear fruit. Amen? In John 15, 16, he said, we will bear fruit and our fruit will abide. When we talk to them, they will listen. By the grace of God, because we have armed ourselves with the power of the Holy Spirit, we are abide in the vine, the vine that is sending us. Jesus is divine and is the one that is sending us, is the one that has commanded us. So if we abide in him and he abide in us, by all means we are going to be fruitful. We are going to come back rejoicing. We are going to go come back praising the Lord. The Bible tells us in Psalm 126 that those who goes, we will go out evangelizing in, in, in hardship, in tears, but at the end of the day, we will come back rejoicing. Because a lot of people will be able to have reached into the heart of the people that we are ministering to outside. And I pray 
that our fruit will abide as we go out in the name of Jesus. That our going out will not be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. Because as we have committed our going out unto the Lord, the Lord God Almighty will go ahead of us. Because I remember whenever we want to go out evangelizing on Saturday, even back home in Nigeria, what we normally do when we get to the station or the area, apart from our individual prayers in our own home, when we now get to the place of, of evangelism, the environment, we will hold hands, we will form a circle, and we will pray again. We will pray against every territorial powers, every power that the principalities and power, every, every gate that is going to disturb us, disturb our, our work there. So, out with this kind of prayer power, when we go out, it's all smiles. It's all smiles. It's easy right. The Lord God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. And Jesus Christ told us in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, he himself told us the importance of prayer. In any circumstance, we must pray, not even evangelizing alone, but we know that evangelizing is very, very crucial. It's the heartbeat of, of Christ. And he has already told us that he will be with us wherever, whenever we go out. And he said, Jesus said, said, uh, said in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, that men always us to pray and not lose heart. So we should always pray and not give up. A lot of us give, give up in, in evangelizing. We don't want to go out because of fear of what they are going to say. The fear of all of the, the other religion. We are fearful of them. But God is telling us not to fear. We all we ought always to pray and not to faint and not to fear. Amen. And I pray that when we are going to do the work of evangelism, we should know that prayer is very, very important. We stand upon the word of God and we empower ourselves with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we go away ahead of us and prepare the way for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer will help us, like I said, to overcome all the challenges that we will face out there. Amen. In Luke, in Matthew, sorry, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus Christ told his disciples when he was sending them, them out, he said, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. What does this mean? It means that when, when we go out there to evangelize, there are a lot of people, we, we as sheep, we have to go with humility. We, we have to be wise. And that is one of the prayers that we have to pray, that Lord, give me the spirit of humility. Because you are sending me out into the midst of wolves. Wolves are those people who are aggressive, those who are people who are knowledgeable, the, the, the intellectuals that are out there. Because... We don't know whom you are going to meet on the, door, on the road when you go out evangelizing. You might meet somebody who is knowledgeable, who is a philosopher, who, is, who will engage you and begin to debunk your, the truth that you want to tell him. He will, he will be using his philosophy. He will be using his traditional idea. He will be using his, the, uh, his uh, literal idea because there are lots of People who are liberal, liberal, liberal ideas out there is going to tell you that, no, 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 I don't understand. I don't even believe what you are saying. He will be questioning the truth. But you will stand upon the truth. And the Bible tells us that Jesus said, you must be wise as serpents. You too, you must be cunning. You must be cunning in, 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 in giving the truth to them. In a cunning way, in a persuasive way, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is why, how we have to be gentle, we have to be gentle, we have to be humble. We, in the face of provocation, in the face of abuse, in the face of persecution, in the face of aggression, because we this aggressive behavior, because we are bound to experience all these things when we go out. And because we have already prayed, we have armed ourselves by the power of the Holy Spirit, that spirit of wisdom that we have prayed about, will enable us to 
to be able to engage it in a wise manner. Amen? Amen. And then you remember that you are sent to preach the good news of salvation. To save the lost. To reach out to the soul of the hard-hearted. To reach out to the soul of sinners. Because that is why we are going there. To win the souls of the sinners. To turn them back. To turn their heart back to Jesus. For them to know the truth. So, we are going to make the sick, the vulnerable, the confused, and the, and the depressed. All these people, before we go out, we must lead them up into the hand of the Lord. That as we go out there to meet them, they will find the touch. They will have the touch of the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit himself will be the one to convict them. That the Holy Spirit will be the power of God through the Holy Spirit. the Holy Spirit is the one that will draw men. Because the Bible tells us that as we lift Jesus Christ up, he will draw men unto himself. We are going there not to lift up ourselves, not to show that we know, we, we have uh, uh, intelligence, or we are educated. No, that is not why we are going. We are going out to lift up Jesus. And as we lift him up, he said he will draw men unto himself. Amen? And I pray that as we do that, in the spirit of humility, in the spirit of wisdom, armed by the power of the Holy Spirit, through our prayers, we will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to touch on something that is very, very crucial, that we have to, we have, we have to go out there in love. Demonstrate the love of God, the compassion of God. I remember when I was doing, uh, going out doing the uh, street pastors' uh, activities in the night, when we are reaching out to the vulnerable, to those who are just coming out from the hall in the in the in the, in the early hours of the night. You see, your our heart goes to them. Our heart goes to them because. These people, they really don't know what they are doing. But the little, the little help we are able to give to them in love. Some of them, when we go back, go, go out again, they even come looking for us. They come looking for the street pastors. Some of them, some of these guys, when they come out from the pub with, in bare, barefooted, that the street pastors are able to hand over the flip, the, the flip flop slippers onto them. So they will be wondering, what is wrong with these people? Why, why are you doing this? But because we are doing that because of the love of Christ. We are doing that because of the compassion of Christ. We are not doing that because of anything. We are doing that because we, Jesus Christ has given us an example to go out there and reach out to the lost. He loved. He went about doing good. So we do, we are supposed to go out there to do good. And we cannot do that good by our own selves, by our own, own, uh, own strength and power. It is only by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power of prayer that we be able to achieve that which we are set out to do. And how can to be able to reach out and touch and heal the sick. And I pray that as we do that, Lord God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Remember, remember that the soul that wins soul is wise. That is the word of God. And we cannot win soul unless we are wise. Amen? And as we go out there in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the power of prayer, I pray that the heart of men will be turned to Jesus. That we, they will know the, the truth and the truth that they know will set them free in the mighty name of Jesus. And I also pray that as we go out to win souls, we shall come back rejoicing. And I, at the light of those that we have saved, will be forever and ever to eternal life in Jesus' name. Thank you.